Y'all have to sing today.
I want to give him praise yeah. and worship yeah. for all that he has done for me. Amen. Yeah. Come on, Sister Malone, yeah. with thy occasion. After thy occasion, yeah. my brother comes with our office. Right? Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. All right. All right.
senior is kind of with a hundred.
Let's give the unreads a hand. Come on, give the unreads a hand. Amen. Dr. Rick, I come. Amen. To share with my son. And us grandson and right. Amen. We thank God for this great preacher, Amen. I've been there for a long time, Dr. Johnson. We thank God. We thank God for Dr. Ricks, who is the preacher for excellent. We thank God for Dr. Ricks. Uh, they uh, put me on program, Dr. Ricks. They introduced this speaker. And Dr. King know that I can't be no other but James. Amen. Amen. I had to be James Cotton, so I had to sing my song. Yeah. That's my testimony. Come on, man. Amen. But this preaching I'm about to introduce is a preaching machine. All right. Thank he is a preaching
Amen. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, I for our party. Yes, Just set up where you are now. I'm just setting where you are. The ministry of God is called you. So I'm right in here in this house. Thank God for you. Thank God for all the clergy that are here as well. All right. All right. So we praise you all with the prayer.
And so I figured there was enough preachers in the Collins family. Well, right. And so when the Lord called me, I remember uh, around about 17 years old living in Amarillo with my dad. I asked my dad, I said, um, how do you know you get called to preach? And so my dad's response to me was, oh, I can tell you, son, is that the devil didn't put it on your heart to ask me a question such as that. And out of all the wisdom that I had each night, and so here I was in the trap house living ungodly, doing ungodly things, and so when I woke up in the middle of the night, cold and sweating, and the Lord was just as clear, I said, what is it on night two? I then put the weed down, the drink down, and I said, well, you know what? I'll just sell it. I won't smoke it. So we don't like to hear this conversation. We don't want preachers to be transparent, but we, 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 we have always been here. We were somewhere before we were here. I wish I had some real folks in the house. And thank God by the grace of God that I went to a meeting one night and my heart just went right and something got a hold of me. So while I'm at the house, um, that last night I got closer to the ground and then someone they had the nerve to tell me, you know, if you die in your sleep, you did. Well, well, yeah. So then I was afraid. And in my fear, that last night I got up, I said, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do it. And so it is, I accepted the calling of the ministry of Jesus Christ, and I told my family, biggest relief in my life at that moment. So much relief. And so, to my surprise, my parents and siblings weren't surprised at all. They already knew. And so, on this journey, I've discovered that it looks like something people just sign up and go do. But I want to tell you something. If, if you have really been truly called to the preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus the Christ, you initially didn't want to do it. I just want to give that disclaimer. He really didn't want to do it. In fact, when I met Tinsley, he was a deacon. He, in fact, was my deacon at Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. And then I remember him sharing with me or asking those same familiar questions about preaching. And so I did to him what my dad did to me. I said, you sure about that? <laughs> and I asked him, and he prayed about that. And then the story went on. He couldn't sleep and all these little changes. And all to what he yesterday led him to the pastoring of God's people, and that's such a blessing. Yes, yeah. But it comes with something. Come with because you got to deal with people. Yeah, and so I want you all to know on today, since you have a pastor you have elected and chosen as your preacher, you ought to treat him right. Do yes, I have any witnesses in the house? You, you ought to learn that because uh, but as far as he did, let's say this, he didn't want to do it. But because he had a conviction and a calling on his life, he chose to do what thus saith the Lord, so shall we. And the Lord has showed us in the word the first thing that we ought to do as, as members of the church under the leadership of the pastor, the Bible says, obey them that have rule over you. Now he didn't ask to have rule over you. He, he just accepted the calling that God placed on his heart. And the Bible says, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Look, your boss makes sure you're paid, but they can't do anything for your soul. Do I have any believers in you? We put a lot of hope and a lot of love into folk that can't do what a preacher. And see, when people die, they don't call the deacon. And if they do, they ask him the deacon to get in contact with the. They don't call. They don't call the mission systems when stuff is going on. They call. Y'all don't 
want to say, but see. And, and so, and so, with all that being said, the least we can do is work with him. Work, work with the preacher. Be patient with the preacher. Know that he has always been saying no. That he still knows some words that we ought not use in church. Know that he still is upset about. He's a hundred percent human. That when we got saved, we just went from a lost sinner to a saved sinner. So he has struggles too. Yes, and so here he is to fulfill his task as the pastor. So it says, obey him, submit yourselves, for they lost for your souls. No one carries that burden but the preacher, the pastor, that God has given you. As they that must give account. We as preachers, we have to give account. Yes, sir. We have to give account not to you, but to God. Yes, and I believe sometimes when you've been a member for a long time, you think that the preacher has to give an account to you, but he doesn't have to answer to you. He has an answer to God. I, I know that you've been giving a lot of money to the church. I know you've been faithful to the church. I know you've been held over to anybody at the church. I realize all of that, but he is still the pastor. Don't see offended when the preacher he tells you that he's the pastor. You don't want to be reminded, but the only reason a pastor reminds you is because sometimes the membership acts like who did Talk to the preacher any kind of way. Say, oh, man, please serve that go. That they may do it with joy. With joy. And it's kind of difficult to do this with joy. On, with the murmuring right. that goes on. Right. That, that, that somehow, some way gets back to the preacher. Well, yeah, yeah. But I want you all to know it is your job to make sure as a member that he is serving and he is full of joy. And I need you to know preachers in this era, we got the word. There are a lot of working preacher pastors. Now the paperwork suggests that we're full time. <laughs> However, the reality, we climb the ladder. See, me and him do the same work. We climb the ladder and paint. And put a, put floors down, so right tile. Matter of fact, we in a season right now. We might lose about six, seven pounds, but it's hot outside. And we got to work off y'all. Come on, talk. And it's, it's a blessing that you have a preacher that go to work. We 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 call full time, but don't have full time pay. Pastors are called to be pastors, and that some preachers and a pastor don't have. They, they don't have any extra, no housing, they don't have gas allowance. And there's so many things that we are without. And it's hard to preach Jesus when you're struggling financially. We don't want to talk about it, but some people have been confused and think that the preacher are preaching for money. Yeah. But any preacher in the pulpit that, that knows what I'm talking about, if we were doing it for money, we were throwing in the towel a long, long, long time ago. It says we ought to obey him because he protects our souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy. A preacher wants to walk in and do it with joy. It is hot. With joy. He wants to feel good when he comes in. The, the choir is already singing. The devotion is already happening. And we just get to walk in and proclaim the gospel of Jesus because we all know that's not really how it goes because death gets his family. Yeah, man. Hard times hit his family. Frustration hits his family. Disappointment hits his family. Heartache and heartbreak hits his family. And sometimes you all believe that we're walking around quoting scriptures all day. But I'm going to say another thing. Sometimes it is hard to make it to this pool pit. But thank God when we get here by the grace. Oh Lord, we have all come a mighty long way. The Bible says, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. It's hard when it's all on the preacher. Yeah, While things are 
going good. It's the church did. Uh -huh. When things go bad, All right. All right. it's only one person to blame, right. and that's the preacher. But I need to tell you all today, he wants to preach and pastor with joy and not with grief. For well, that is uncomfortable for you. Did y'all get it? I think that we have, for the longest, have pointed out the obligation and expectation of the preacher. And I believe that members, as long as they've been members, have not figured out how to be a member. Yeah, that's it. Now you know his duty. Preach, man. We got on the wrong page. He, he knows him. So the Bible says that it's unprofitable for you if he's preaching with grief. Right. If you see your preacher's ties and water. Right. What? <laughs> if you see that his ties are worn, ask the preacher, does it need some help? It's all right. Yeah, yeah. To ask him what he needs. If you see a need, it's all right to ask him. And you ain't a flunky. I know that's improper English. You're not a flunky for helping the preacher. See, if you hang around the wrong folks, you're going to bless the preacher. But I need to tell you, it's a blessing in blessing the preacher. Yes, Me and my dad were having a conversation up here about Elijah with that lady that was preparing her last meal. All right. Well, here it is. So the lady was preparing her last meal, and Elijah came. She didn't know Elijah from nobody. Yes, and then who came with some directives, if you will? Right. The Bible does not declare that she was asked of. The man Elijah came and simply told her, go fix me some meat. All right. All right. Go fetch me some more. He was thirsty. All right. And instead of preparing her last meal, for her and her son, before they died, she did it for him. Now, the conclusion of that story was she was left with leftovers. Y'all want to say this, y'all you. Because she blessed the man of God. I wonder what kind of faith you have, you know. You, you want this point for blessing this person and that person, but, but, but don't feel bad for blessing the preacher. Because quite the opposite, it is unprofitable for you. There are people that don't believe in anniversary and, and installation and giving the money to the preacher. But they want to have an education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he'll get up and use the words you don't know anyhow. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. okay. He wants to do what God has called him to do with joy. Right. And it is unprofitable for the entire church to do anything less than that. Right. Text says, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this that I may be restored to you the sooner. Then verse 20 says, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Anybody want to do God's will? Bless the preacher, respect the preacher, love the preacher. If you see he needs help, help the preacher. It says, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Well, my brothers and my sisters, it pleases God for you to bless the preacher. It pleases God for you to work closely with the preacher. It, it pleases God for you to pray for the preacher. Don't have to do say, not, not, not pray on the preacher, but, but pray for the preacher. I wish I had some help. Does anybody want to be blessed? Stop. Stop with the blessing, the preacher. And be all right with it. Yes. The Bible says, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in 
in sight through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and ever. And I don't know about you, but I want God to bless me. But the Lord of God to be a blessing to you and the church. You have to find yourself obeying the preacher. Doing what's the ass of the preacher. And the Bible says, Lord, that God, He will, He will, He will, He will, He will, he will take care of you. Did you hear what I say?
they just want to walk around all tough. It's unprofitable for you to be walking around trying to run the church that you ain't playing. Shame on you. Let's love and respect the fruit.
blessed in the spirit of talking to one another as it should. And addressing things in a Christian way. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would mind everything that's not of you from this place right now. And I pray now that old madness does not come into a new situation. In the name of Jesus, let them forgive about the things that are on the high them and press forward.
preach the word. Yeah. Being as an instinct. Alice. We prove, we build, exhort the all along, suffering and doctrine. That's the tension. I charge you to preach the word. Get all the sooner you can get. Get all the master degree you can get, the last degree. But I charge you to preach the word. Uh -huh. The word. Go what school you go to, preach the word. And I said it with passion because there's a lot of stuff going to come in with this. Yeah. And if we're going to turn the church back, like it ought to be turned better the church, you got to preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. 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 And that's a charge. Amen. That's a charge that you must preach the word. But all, whatever kind of wisdom you have, uh, in case you might obtain, when you step behind this pool, Preach the word. Amen. 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 And I don't want to hear it all the time, but preach the word. The word. All right. So I charge you to preach the word. Then it says, Amen. To preach the word, it, it begins in season when, when they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it. Yeah, right. Out of season, they reprove and rebuke. Now that's, that, that, that's what you might be called. Rebuke season. They want to shout every Sunday. But you gotta call them, you gotta call C and C. That's it. And you gotta call right, right, and wrong, wrong. Amen. And, 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 and help me, brother, uh, uh, Dr. 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 Rich. God can't use a scary preacher. I don't know. No, sir. God won't use a scary preacher. Yeah. He will not use a weak back spaghetti back on jail on the preacher. Yeah. You gotta stand there yeah. and call it like it is. Amen. Amen. If we can see it right here. Amen. See, 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 uh, Pastor, Pastor, uh, 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 Johnson, we like the Lord as my shepherd. Yeah, yeah, we love that. We, we love the 23rd Psalm. But, it, it, but it, it, if you don't like a baby, how rude will be. You can't get the Lord to love you. Amen. You, see, see, you, 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 you got to preach it. All right. And, and, and teach it. Amen. Then, 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 then I charge you. To lead strongly. Right. Yes, lead strongly. Not only lead strongly, but lead patiently. Because you have to understand these are God's people. And they sheep. And sheep follow. If they don't follow, they ain't sheep, they goats. Because sheep want to be led. Y'all yeah. ain't good. I ain't got to say anything. I got you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You got to lead. You got to lead. You got to lead. They ain't, they ain't going to now, it, it, now, I've been, I've been doing this for 40 years. Dr. Rick, if they like everything you said, you may leave. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. They like everything you said, you ain't leaving. That's right. So you, you got to lead. So I mean, lead strongly and patiently. Then I charge you, amen. I'll give you a I charge you not to seek fame or fortune. Yes, sir. All right. But to, watch this. But to make full proof of your ministry. I know you love your pastor, M.L. Collins. I know you love your father and ministry, M.L. Collins. I know you love Dr. Rex. I know you love your grandfather and ministry, J.L. Collins. But make full proof of your ministry. You ain't LL, you're not JL, you're not operating. You gotta make full proof of your business because the Lord calls you to. Yeah. I'll charge you in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. May God keep you as I pray.
and I'm reading verses 12 and 13. Yeah. Verses, and we beseech you, brothers, yeah. to know them, to know them which labor among you mm -hmm. and are over you in the Lord yeah. and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love yeah. for their work's sake and be at peace among yourself. It is God's will for you to know the pastor. All right. All right. Get to know him. All right. And then the record says to esteem him highly in love. Yeah. Wow. Amen. And then also uh, to remember uh, that God will bless you. Amen. If you will do what God requires you right. to do toward your pastor. That's right. Yeah. The other thing, and I want to read the other passage, is Ephesians 6. <laughs> Ephesians 6, verse 10, first of all, says, Finally, my brother, listen, be strong, strong in the Lord. Yeah. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Listen. New Union Grove. I want to say to you, well, as the pastor Tim, you all pray and you all stick with the word of God because the devil wants to tell the church yes, sir. Yes, sir. he wants to destroy us. Right. Yes, sir. Every one of us. Yes, sir. The devil has no respect for persons. He don't care about how much we love the Lord. Talk, man. We all got a target on our back. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And anything he can do to make the new union grow look bad, he'll do it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all be strong. Be strong. Church, be strong. Tender, be strong. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Don't <coughs> let the devil mess you up. That's right. That's right. That's, right. That's all he wants to do. Mm -hmm. But you be strong. Be strong. And you stand against him. And then, there's a verse on the front of the sixth chapter that says, Pray. That's it. All right. Pray. That's one of the That's weapons it. we use. Yeah. Pray for them. Pray for the preacher. Yeah. Tell you pray for these folks. Yeah. You understand? And God will bless you. Yeah. God will bless you. There's nothing you will face that God can't help you through. That's yeah. right. Amen. If you just keep your hand in God's hand, oh. do what God wants you to do. Yeah. God will take care of you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Amen. 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 Presentations, if there may be. I know there is. God bless you. Which one handed to us? I gave it to the lady. <laughs> <laughs> God bless both of you. You know we love you. Yes, ma'am. We might not walk the way you want us to all the time. But sometimes we're doing the best we can. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. I don't know if I got my hood for you. Thank 